So hello guys and welcome back to another video. So this right here might be a familiar sight because this is my 780 Ti, um, which is the car that I made the first teardown video of. So why am I? Uh, why do I have this card back on the table again? Well, basically, um, I'm not really satisfied with how that first video turned out, and um, I think this card deserves better than such a arguably crappy video. So I'm redoing it with my uh, new camera, the new uh, camera stand, and also some more experience in uh, doing these teardown videos. So. Yeah, um, I'm not going to take that first video down, you can still watch it if you want, but I'm gonna pretend it doesn't exist right now. So, what do we have here? It is a, wind f a Gigabyte Windforce GTX 780 Ti. Um, this was my daily driver for over four years, until in January of this year, um, one of the VRAM modules on this card died, and uh, it is no longer usable. Um, First, you could still ins install drivers and uh, just use basic applications that don't involve 3D rendering and the card would do it without any problem, but now I tried, um, well, I, uh, um, I tried if I could fix the memory module if I lower the clock and I discovered this card doesn't ins want to install its drivers anymore, so until I figure out why or I completely repair this card by reballing all the memory chips. It's basically just a um, paperweight. So yeah, um, but it's not gonna stop me from tearing this card apart, of course. And um, so um, let's just get right into it because I don't want this episode to be 30 minutes long. So what we have here are the four uh, screws on the GPU. Uh, we are gonna have to take those out, of course, and then we have three other screws um, that also screw into the heatsink. This is where the VRMs are. So I'm gonna take out the VRM screws first. Position them a little bit. And also what I'm gonna do with this card is, um, in the first video, I just reused the old firma paste and put some additional, uh, 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 yeah, put some additional firma paste on, which is just my my cheap Kudo Master V1 thermal compound. Um, I'm not gonna do this do it this time. This time I'm going to use proper firma paste. I'm going to use my firma grizzly conductor knot, um, which if I should use this card. Again, sometime uh, I can just keep it on there and reuse it. I'm gonna have to take it apart, obviously, to reboil all the memory chips if I do it. But uh, I I think I have enough try or not. So uh, let's let's just pretend that the card still works or that I can reuse all of it. Though I might be able to reuse like 90% of it. So basically the same thing. So I'm gonna stop talking now. Um, what we did right now, we we took all the screws out. And now the whole he heatsink should come off. So that's everything you have to do for this heatsink to separate itself from the PCB. Of course, it's still being held on by the thermal pads and the thermal paste, but now it has come off. So since this is a 700 series card, we don't have any kind of RGB going on. We just have one fan cable for the three fans. I'm gonna take this out real quick. So, now the heatsink is off. And the firm paste application seem, lo looks looks okay from last time, but it's sti still a, a, a very big mess because this is, there's way too much firm paste on there and I have to clean this GPU properly to look good, but well, it's made to perform, not to look good, so basically it doesn't make a difference. So yeah, here we have the uh, the whole heatsink assembly with the three fans, the six heat pipes. Uh, you can see here 
um, these two are a bit thicker than the other ones. I don't know how thick they are. It could be that the thicker ones are 10 millimeter, the others are I 8. The but it could also be that the thicker ones are 8 and the smaller ones are 6. Um, looks like it's the latter one of two. So yeah, that's basically uh, basically ju just a normal heatsink with a couple base plate, uh, thermal pads for the VRAM, thermal pads for the VRAMs. And um, yeah, that's basically it. Pretty bas uh, pretty much. Well, it's a graphics card heatsink. Uh, not nothing to say about that. So I'm I'm gonna put the heatsink away real quick. And now here we have the the PCB of the card. And now we can look at uh, at the PCB. Uh, I'm gonna show all, all its features uh, and then uh, clean the thermal paste off and uh, uh, put the crown on. So, what you can see here are the uh, these here are the 12 memory modules that are on here. These are GDDR5 and they are from uh, they are Hynix. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, I can I I think I think you can see it. It's really hard to see even with uh, with real life eye. Um, so yeah, um, as I've already said, wha at least one of these has died, and so the card really doesn't work anymore. Otherwise, it's it's completely intact, and it does work. So yeah. So as as I've said, I might reball all these memory chips. So here in the middle we've got, we've got of course the GPU, a GK110425B1 in this case. Uh, it's also written on there, we're gonna see that once I clean off the thermal paste. And then on the right side of the card we've got the VRMs, uh, which are these here. Um, these are not stock VRMs, so this is a custom PCB. You can see that um, from several things. First, the stock PCB would have another solder point for another 8 pin right here. And also, the uh, um, the stock PCB wouldn't have a different VRM setup. It, it would be missing these two VRMs right here, if I remember correctly, or or these two. Uh, one of uh, these two groups is uh, missing on the stock PCB. So here we have two additional uh, VRM module uh, phases uh, for the graphics card. I don't know for certain, but I would say these two phases are for the memory, and then here we've got whole eight phases for the core. And um, that would also explain why this card overclocks so well. So I, um, if you watch other videos from me, I pretty much every video I say how great of an overclocker this card is, because normally a 780 Ti boosts to around a gigahertz, and then there's the uh, really really expensive gigahertz edition that this card also had um, because the funny thing is this is not the gigahertz edition gigabyte makes another card based of the same PCB as uh, no in fact not based of the reference PCB but I also might be mistaken why because I've seen uh, not not gigahertz edition cards on eBay that also seem to use this PCB so I might be completely wrong about that the thing is as far as I know, the normal Windforce OC card, which this is, uses the reference PCB. Not this custom PCB right here. This custom PCB is for the Gigahertz Edition card. And, well, I might have been using a Gigahertz Edition card all the time while not knowing it. And that might explain why it overclocks so well, because the Gigahertz Edition had an advertised clock speed of 1.15 GHz. This one did 1.163 stock without any overclock. So at least uh, 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 already uh, uh, over 150 megahertz higher than basically any 780 Ti did as far as I remember. And when you got to overclock this thing that's where the real fun started. So uh, it gets kinda uh, kinda weird here because all the programs I used reported different clock speeds. I got results from, oh, it's just running 1 gigahertz to, oh, it's running 1.5 gigahertz on air. Uh, and I don't really know which program I uh, I should believe. 
in MS Afterburner I had something like 1.25 gigahertz or, or closer to 1.3 but not really 1.3 directly um, well I um, when I overclocked this card I wasn't really experienced in uh, overclocking so uh, I also think I never really saturated the core clock on this because I encountered artifacts that now from my experience I would say were artifacts from the memory not from the GPU so I could have pushed a GPU a little bit farther to like 1.3 and uh, all the other programs would report slightly different things. The fact is, 1.3 GHz on this card is um, yeah, a little bit impossible. As far as I know, there are some cards. Uh, obviously, this one did it. And there are also uh, another few really, really golden cards that can do this on air uh, without any wicked cooling attached to them. And yeah, um, you might see why I want this card uh, repaired. Uh, because it's not just the, that the clock speed is crazy high, it's also the performance from this card was really, really, really high. Um, so if you hit uh, hit up user benchmark and compare this to a 1066 gig, you will see that this one is like 0 to 1% faster. So it's about on par with 1066 gig. Um, and it just so happens that uh, my friend also uses a 1066 gig well not anymore he now is a 2080 but used one and his one also was a pretty decent overclocker so it managed 2.1 gigahertz constantly which is pretty good as far as i remember and um well we both benchmarked our cards without any manual overclocking just where they would boost to if i remember correctly because we weren't that into overclocking back then and the thing was, his 1060 didn't stand a chance against this card. Like, the 1060 was completely obliterated by this. And I, I did some further digging and uh, looked up some benchmark results online. And this card was closer to a 1070 than a 1060. So, like, uh, not, r not really, I know, but basically... Ch change on that 7 for 9 and basically said this is a 980 Ti with 3 gigabytes <laughs> of VRAM but th I, I'm, I was really impressed by this car and I was really kind of sad when it died after f over 4 years so I really would like having this car rep repaired so now enough talking um, now I gonna start cleaning off the thermal paste so this video doesn't uh, doesn't get too long, but I'm afraid it's going to be over 20 minutes because the old one was already 24, and I uh, did a lot a lot less coordinated rambling. I can already see it a bit that massive GK110 GPU. Even though by today's today's standards it's not really that big, like the TU102 inside my 2080 Ti is even bigger than this. But I still think this this GPU looks really really impressive. Like it's like with fast cars that big GPUs just impress by their looks. <laughs> I don't know how many people can relate to that, probably none. <laughs> so I'm gonna clean the metal uh, part a bit, so, those, so the GPU looks kinda okay, so there's still firmer pace in there, but well, it's, it's enough to see. So, I'm gonna wait for the camera to focus on to this GPU. Oh, it's like a mirror. You can s you can see the smartphone, <laughs> and there's my ceiling. <laughs> so, yeah, now it's focused. So there we have the GK one ten four two five B one. Sadly, it's, uh, um, some parts of that uh, name or whatever it is uh, are missing. I don't know why. Uh, it was already missing when I first took it apart. So yeah, but 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 you can still read it. So you know what GPU that is. And I, 
I think this card lost, just looks impressive. The only thing that could make this card even better is having a matte PCB, because this one is glossy. But, well, enough rambling. Now we gotta put on the cryonaut. And from my experience, I'm not using that application uh, uh, tool that comes with the cryonaut this time, because it always results in a big mess. This is probably also gonna result in a big mess, but in a kind of less big mess than a big mess. If you get what I'm saying, probably not, but yeah. So, now we're gonna take the coin out and put a generous amount on there because this is a big GPU. So, that seems to be enough. And now I'm going to spread it around a bit because, uh, well, of course, the cooler is going to spread this uh, around, but I'm I want to assist it a bit so we don't accidentally miss one edge of the die, which would be really unfortunate if that edge would overheat and result in a dead die, in addition to the dead memory chip. So now... Spread it a bit in more evenly, so we cover the whole die. And any imperfections in that will be well. Any imperfections will be purged by the cooler. If purge is the right word, I don't think it is. I think I've said it enough times that English is my my first language. Because I'm German. So oh, come on. You can still see a bit of the dye through there on this edge. I want that covered. Ah oh, shoot. No, I ruined it. So uh, this area is not covered right now, but I'm I'm just gonna trust the cooler to do the job for me there. No, it didn't help. It make it that that actually made it worse. All right, one last rescue attempt till I just say that the cooler is gonna do it. Okay, that looks about right. That yeah, looks about right. So, so now let's put the cooler back on. Oh. Yeah, I I dropped it. I don't have the Linus Drop Tips T-shirt on, so just you know. <laughs> so yeah, you know. I, I, well, I never said it before, but I bought one of the. These are Balinus tackling shirts, and I call it the Linus Drop Tips T-shirt because, actually, when I'm wearing it, I'm dropping more stuff than I'm not wearing it. So, and also on this side, I'm gonna take off the thermal paste because we only want cryonaut on this. Don't want any of that cheap Cooler Master V1 thermal compound, but which, uh, uh, well. It probably performs better than whatever was on there for the last four years, but I really want that crown on there. So, yeah. Well, 
what you can I, yeah what you can what you can see already is the burn marks left by the die <laughs> all that time I also saw that on the uh, on the copper block inside the server's custom loop like where the, the die is on the CPU the copper like darkens I'm not a chemist so I don't really know why but I think it has to do with the heat that the die puts out so now I'm gonna take a clean piece and do one last round of polishing and I already have thermal paste on my fingers how great <laughs> Well, I, al I always used to wash my hands after these teardown videos because of all the dust that comes out of these heat sinks. Even if you clean them, there's still dust left in them because it can't really get into all these fins. So yeah, I always wash my hands because of all the dust. So now that looks... Yeah, they lo look how dark that stuff is that comes off of it. It's probably still remnants of the stock thermal paste that is so far into this. Uh, I'm gonna take one, another one. Like the s old stock thermal paste has merged with the copper. <laughs> and I'm taking it back out. Oh yeah. <laughs> so okay. That's gonna be enough. That looks that looks clean now. It looks really clean. So now let's get that hair out of here. So now I have to position the card so that this uh, I.O. shield here hangs over the edge of the table because otherwise I might not be able to fit the card on here again. I might have to move the camera. So no, no. I already made that. I made that mistake in the other video. First, put the fan cable back in. Now we can do it. So. And yeah, I have to move the camera, so it's gonna be... Yeah, yeah like this. So now, we can just... Gonna have to search the uh, screw holes. What are the points where the screws go, and I don't know if they have a special name. So now it aligned. Okay, so I'm first gonna put in the free VRM screws so everything sits tight and then I'm gonna put in the GPU screws in a cross pattern just like every time because every time in these videos I tell you guys that you have to do it in a cross pattern, not screw it in all the way in the first time because we want to spread the stress of mounting the cooler evenly across the GPU and the old PCB, otherwise we might crack the GPU and that's not fun time ahead. We gotta tighten them all down so the cooler sits tight and spreads that thermal paste evenly across the die to all the areas where we might not have covered the die all the way. So now it is tight. And the 780Ti is reassembled. 
new thermal paste that is now proper high-end thermal paste even though the stock, uh, well, uh, the stock stuff technically also is high-end thermal paste it was under but it is over four years old and that stuff really was rock hard and also this card was like in it well in in summer like now um the like the 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 ludicrous 40 degrees are over in europe but when uh, a few years back we had similar temps and when i was using this card it got like a 86 degrees not fun far too hot for what i'm comfortable with and then all the other uh, times when it's not blazingly hot outside it was like 76 degrees which I'm also not comfortable with. I'm comfortable with up to 70 degrees and after that I, I'd rather lower the clock than to get any more heat into the card. And yes, that's probably a bit low for being uncomfortable with heat, but that's just where I personally say, okay, not, not going further than that. So yeah, um, whatever, there's no cryonaut on there. We. I don't think that uh, I could improve the temps much more by putting different thermal paste on there. So like, well, like kingpin thermal paste would, I think, be a bit better. But uh, I saw a bench, uh, I saw some test spawns where some thermal pastes were tested against each other, and yeah, it was like within one degree, and a lot of them performed exactly the same. So doesn't doesn't really isn't really worth it so now uh, now I read it the 780 Ti teardown hopefully with better quality hopefully with a lot less inconsistent rambling and more focused uh, well fo focused rambling I think on the on the matter which is the teardown of this wonderful graphics card here the Gigabyte Windforce GTX 780 Ti the card that stood by my side for over four years, which I'd really like to have repaired. So now um, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you watched <laughs> up to this point. And yeah, um, until next time. Bye.